Kristen with the Museum of Arts and Sciences here again, and today we're celebrating National Beignet Day. Today we're going to take a stroll in our minds to the French Quarter, New Orleans, to Cafe Du Monde, where the best beignets are found. Now I grew up eating these, and we always uh, would buy the box mix, and let me tell you, this recipe blows that out of the water. So follow along and we're going to make the closest beignets I've been able to make to put you in the French Quarter to enjoy this delicious French choux pastry treat, the beignet. Let's get started with the ingredients we'll need to make our delicious beignets. You'll need 3 fourths cup of water and it will need to be between 105 and 110 degrees. You'll need one packet of active dry yeast, a third cup of sugar, a half a cup of whole milk, one egg, three fourths teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of vegetable shortening, three and a half cups of all purpose flour. You'll need oil for frying and powdered sugar to garnish. Uh, for the oil, if the recipe calls for cottonseed oil, that's the special specific oil that Cafe Du Monde uses. Um, I do not have that in my cabinets and I couldn't find it in the supermarket. So vegetable oil it is. I've tried it with vegetable oil and they tasted just fine. Um, but the cottonseed oil is supposed to not alter the natural taste of the beignets themselves. So I have vegetable oil, use whatever oil you'd like to use. Um, the first step of this will only need the water and the active dry yeast, so we can put all of the other ingredients away for now. And let's get started with step one. Okay, let's get started with step number one. Now I did misspeak, you are gonna need your sugar for this step of the uh, recipe. So you'll need your water, a dry active yeast packet, as well as um, your sugar. So we want our water temperature to be between 105 and 110 degrees. Uh, that specific temperature is gonna yield a foamy reaction to the yeast, which is what we want. So you will also need a thermometer so that you can monitor, excuse me, your temperatures. Um, it looks like my water is just between 105 and 110 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in my water. My dry active yeast and my sugar and we're just gonna mix this up until it's well um, well mixed in together and then we're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes um, and that 15 minutes will, it will foam up and then we'll add the other ingredients to create our dough so we're just gonna mix this up And then we're just going to let it sit for 15 minutes and then we'll come on back and we'll take a look. Um, hopefully we have that foamy reaction that we're looking for and then we can get started with adding the other ingredients to make our dough. All right, so I'll see you guys in 15 minutes. We are approaching the 15 minute mark and I just wanted to um, say that I realized the original bowl that I was mixing in was a little too small. So I put it into a little bit of a larger bowl and I just wanted to come over and give you guys a look at what that foamy reaction looks like. So. You can see how it's foaming um, at the top there. Um, and that's gonna give us the airiness to our beignets. So just wanted to give you guys a visual of what you're looking for when you're looking for that foamy reaction. Now, if you forget to put the sugar in, it will not do this. So the sugar is key um, to getting that reaction of the foaminess. I just wanted to give you guys a visual on that. Um, so we have a couple more minutes and then we'll get to mixing in all of our other ingredients. All right, it's been 15 minutes. I just gave you guys a visual of what that foaming reaction looked like. Um, so we are ready to add in our other ingredients. So we're going to start with our milk. We're gonna 
whisk in our milk. Our egg, we're gonna put that in there. Our salt. And we're gonna add in half of the flour at this point. So just half of the flour you're going to add in. Just use your best judgment. I think at this point I'm gonna switch over to a spoon. Okay, so once you get it to a place where you can kind of pour it out onto your um, a kneading surface, you're gonna wanna flour a surface a little bit. I'm just gonna use my countertop. So I'm just gonna get all the little sticky parts out and then just kind of give it a couple of kneads there. And I'm gonna go ahead and form it into a ball. And you're gonna place this in a, um, a bowl that you've boiled. So just kind of oil the inside of the bowl. Cause we're gonna let the, the dough rise for two hours. So you're gonna put it in a warm spot to rise for two hours. So let me go get my bowl. Now I've oiled the inside of this pretty well. I'm just gonna spread it out. Okay, so you can see here's my dough. It looks good, it's smooth. I'm just gonna place it in the bowl there. Okay, see that? And then I'm going to Take some saran wrap, some cling wrap, and I'm going to cover it. You can cover it with a towel. Um, I do prefer the, the saran wrap because I like to peek in on it. I'm impatient. So there's our dough, it's ready to rest. Now I am going to choose to put mine in the oven. Um, obviously the oven is not one, but that's just a warm place for it to sit um, and do its thing. So let's place it in the oven and 
Check it again in two hours. Okay, it's been two hours since we put our dough in the oven, um, our warm place for it to rise. And it looks awesome. I'll bring it to the camera so you can see a little bit better. But it's definitely doubled in size. It's very soft and airy, as you can see. And it smells awesome. So at this point, we're going to dump our dough out. And we are going to get it to a place where we can roll it with our rolling pin. We're gonna roll this out to where it is roughly um, a fourth of an inch thick. Um, so let's get rolling. We're gonna roll our dough out to roughly one fourth of an inch thick. In the meantime, you want to start heating your oil, and you're going to heat your oil to 370 degrees. And now that we have our dough rolled out, we are going to cut it into two and a half inch by two and a half inch squares. That's just the size of the beignets served at Cafe Du Monde, but you're welcome to make them whatever shape you like. Okay, we have our beignet shapes made out, and as our oil heats, we will get ready to start frying them up. We are here, you can see that the oil is heating up. We are at about 350 degrees. We'll need to get to 370 before we can drop any of our beignet squares in the uh, oil. But meanwhile, I've set up a cooling rack is where I'm going to place the beignets once they've been flash fried in the oil. And um, the trick is keeping the oil at the 370 temperature. Um, if you go over, your beignets aren't going to have that nice golden brown look. They're going to burn up pretty quick. So um, it's do your best to gauge and keep your, your oil at that 370 temperature. We are getting very close to that 370, so I'm gonna lower the heat on my stove top a little bit. And we are at 370 now, so I'm gonna take my first square and drop it in. Let's see, it's starting to bubble. And I'm gonna do three at a time. And once it bubbles up, you want to take a large spoon just kind of splash some oil over the tops of each beignet. And you can see that they're bubbling up pretty well, which is what we want. So we're just, you want to do this for about 20 or so seconds. And you can see where it's starting to brown on the bottom part of the um, pastry. So you just want to give it a flip. See how dark they're getting? That's because we are way over the 370 mark. We'll lower the heat on our stove top. We're just gonna flash some oil over the top. And these are looking pretty good. These are very well done. That oil is definitely too hot.
good first trial run. I'm gonna wait until my oil comes back down. Okay, we're back to 370. So let me drop a couple more of these in there. These look pretty good. And just from that, you can see over here the difference the oil temperature makes. And how you want them to be a light golden brown color. As soon as you've fried up all of your beignets, then you're going to serve three to a plate. You're going to take your powdered sugar and you're going to just heavily dress the tops of your beignets. Like so. And there you have it. Made from scratch beignets. Now there's a couple of tips that I want to share with you before you dig right in. First tip, try not to wear black or any dark colors when you're biting into your freshly made beignets. Two, try not to inhale as you take your first bite because you'll inhale straight powdered sugar and that's hard to recover from. And also you'll notice that we didn't use any additional flavings or fillings for our beignets. Beignets do not involve or include any sort of flavored fillings, just dough and powdered sugar. So thanks for baking with me today. I hope that you enjoy your beignets. Bon appetit and laissez le bon temps rouler.